sing that we sing and portray are giving us limits for the calculation of how much we love God. Mm-hmm. And so we are comfortably seated, having our own speedometers of how much, loving meters of how much we love God. <laughs> and we are comfortable, and we are using this, this measuring tool to even measure other people. But do you love God? Mm-hmm. Do yeah. you love God? Do you think you love God? Show me a man who loves to share Jesus. And let me tell you a man who loves God. Show me a man who is not afraid, truly not afraid yeah. of this Jesus. He's not shy of what he believes. He's not shy of who he is. He, he loves God. Show me a man who is personally, personally crazy about the message of Jesus. And let me show you a man who loves God. Hallelujah. Because we have our measures. So the Bible says that greater love has no man. Yeah. <laughs> greater love has no man that one may lay his life for his friends. There is no greater love than this. But when you come again into the scripture, let's, this one you can just write down because of time. John chapter 3, verse 13. The Bible says that, you see, he was talking about, 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 about love. John 13, 34. John 13, 34. He was talking about love. And what is our measure of love? He says, A new commandment I give you that you love one another. Yeah. Even as I have loved you, that, that you also love one another. And now, in John chapter 14, verse 5. He says, if you, live, if you love me, keep my commandment. Oh, so what is the measure of love? Is it how early you come to church? Mm. Is it how early you come to church? No. What is the measure of love? Is it how much money you give at church? No. What is the measure of love? Is it how, how high you shout amen? No. What is the measure of love? If you love me, huh? Verse, verse, verse 6, go down please. Let me not pollute the church. Verse 7. Now you know you love him. I've seen him. Oh, verse 8. Sorry. We'll not go to verse 9. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, you caused my problem. So it's actually chapter 13. Now, now, so follow me. Now, if you love God, he says, keep my commandment. And what is the commandment? We read earlier, a new commandment do I give you, that you love one another. Yeah. And what is love? It's that there is no greater love than that a man who lay, lay down his life yeah, for yeah, others. Yeah. How much of your life have you laid down for others? Yeah. And so we may do things that portray, that tries to tell of how much you love God. But the Bible says that the true measure of love, if a person says he loves God, the true measure of it is that that man, the greatest measure of love is that a man will lay down his life for others. And now let's bring it into our first letter. If anybody really knew the, the, the cure for cancer, eh? now a person was sick, afflicted and plagued with cancer, and he was able to find a cure for cancer, and he healed himself, and he kept this cure of cancer all to himself, and he died with it. How would, would, the, would the world call this man? How would we call this man? Wicked. Very Even more worse, wicked is not enough. <laughs> Selfish, what else? Greedy, what else? A man who had a cure of cancer. Evil. evil. Yes, evil is best. But <laughs> evil. That you could cure. Look at how cancer is, is plaguing kids, women, mothers, and you had a cure and you kept it all to yourself. And you died with it. Are you not an evil person? No, uh, is that person not an evil person? Yeah. Yeah. Now, listen, if we could make everybody in this world live a comfortable life and people not sleep on the streets of America, and people not beg for arms, if we could go to Africa and build everybody houses for them to sleep in, if we could provide food for everybody and everybody have electricity, if you could do that and you, didn't, you never did that and you died with all your resources, what kind of man are you? No, what kind of man are you? You're selfish and evil. True or false? Man. In that same way, if you're salvation, you know Jesus. Yeah. And others are going to hear. People are not saved. You know them. And you tell me that I don't want to offend them. You are evil. Mm-hmm. Man. Wow. We are very quick uh, in telling that man who did not help every other person was evil because he had it. Yes. Let's take it into the spirit. Yes. You have faith. You have Jesus. Yeah. At least when you fall into, into depression, you have a God that you can cry on to. There's a song you can listen to that gives you hope. You kept it all to yourself. Yeah. You don't want to share with anybody. And you are calling somebody else evil. Who are you? 
Who are you? Wow. Yeah, you don't love God. Yeah. Do you think you love man? Do you think you love them? I don't want to offend them. Imagine there's fire coming this way. You saw the fire and you were running away from it. And you saw your brother, you work with him, you are in the same class with him, you are friends with him, and he's approaching the fire, eating beggar comfortably with pizza on top of the beggar. And he's, he's approaching the fire, and you are running this way. And you know that you'll be burnt when he goes this way. And you are comfortably running away. In fact, when you even met him, oh my brother, how are you doing? Do you need some money for more beggar? How is going? Enjoy the beggar in the, in, the, in, the, in the burning fire. What kind of man are you? You are evil. Yeah. It's simple to say it like this. Let's take it deep into the spirit. Thousands of people who know Jesus, eating their beggar with, with, with pizza on top, drinking whatever they will drink, enjoying life. And you decide that for their comforts. You are telling me that this guy is going to be burnt. I, I, I don't want to inconvenience him. I don't want to force him to, to go to, to not go that way. I, I, I cannot force. He has his rights. What kind of man are you? Do you love God? Do you think you love God? Then share the gospel. Yeah. If you think it's not about you alone, if you think you love God, then get out of this, of this hall and go out there and tell somebody, Jesus loves you. Do you think you love God more than yourself? Then be ready to feel, feel a little, a little bit uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. How would I look in front of him? Look at me. I'm a gentleman. How would I look if I tell this guy that Jesus loves him? Yeah. Look at me. Yeah. Look at my shape as a lady. Coca-Cola already. It's if you go to where I come from, it's Coca-Cola, but here I know that it's Coca-Cola. Look at my shape. You know why I'm talking about shape? Yeah. I'll preach that message today. Someone say preach. I don't preach it. But you love God. Let me present to you that God loves souls more than your offering. Yeah. Amen. 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 Some good messages. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Let me present to you that God loves souls more than your suit. Yeah. Let me present to you that God loves souls more than how cool you look. Amen. And let me also present to you that you have responsibility for every man who is close to you who doesn't know Jesus. Yeah, yeah. For one day. Just like Abel, you have to answer for him. Yeah. Where is Cain? Cain, rather. Mm-hmm. And you say, I want my brother's keeper. And God will tell you, that will be wicked servant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That will be wicked servant. Especially if you have a brother in your own house, a sister in your own house, a neighbor, a classmate, a friend. You call every day. You never tell them the gospel. Mm-hmm. One day, we may have to bear responsibility of you. Church! Get out there and talk to people about souls. Yeah. Talk to them about Jesus. Tell them how much he loves them. Don't go judging and condemning. Tell them about the love of Christ. Don't tell others about the second coming of Christ if you've not told them about his first coming. That's right. Jesus. Jesus. Don't tell them about his condemn- condemnation if you've not told them about his love. Yes. Yeah. Because his, fe- his second coming is because he came first. His condemnation is because he loved. Yes. And people are out there waiting for this message of love. What are you doing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is the reason why we must live a daily life of evangelism. My third point. And I'm done. Point number three. Because we shall receive a reward. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We shall receive a reward. Point number three. We shall receive a reward. I want us to read a very long passage. Just uh, a few uh, uh, verses, and then I'll explain to you this thing. First Corinthians chapter three, verse twelve. First Corinthians chapter three, verse twelve. We've had empty churches, empty chairs in this church enough. Man, that place must be filled with people who want to know about Jesus. Yeah, I love the song. It says, "Everybody want to know." Everybody want to know. Everybody want to know who Jesus is. Hey, everybody want to know. Yeah, everybody want to know. Everybody want to know who Jesus is. Everybody want to know. Everybody want to know. Everybody want to know. Everybody wants to know who Jesus 
Using, look at the things they used to build on the foundation. One, flow with me. One, gold. Two, silver. Three, four, wood. Five, straw. Do you know what is hay? Or straw is what? Grass. Grass. So there are three things that the foundation we've received as Christians. We have received the foundation. Mm? Paul says that for it is upon this foundation that I, I build as a master builder. So the foundation we have received is our salvation. The foundation is what? Our, salvation. our foundation is what? Our salvation. Our salvation. Now, and the Bible says, go back again. The Bible says, now, so on building on this salvation, which is the foundation, there are people who sit here who are building with gold. It means that you have, you have a foundation like a, like, a, like a house. And you can build your house, you know, you have a foundation. But what you can build, the kind of house you are building, some will build with gold. Others will build with silver. Others will build with costly stones. Others with wood. And others with hay. Verse 13. Their work will be shown for what it is. Because the day will bring it to light. The day. Uh -huh. It will be revealed by fire. This point I'm, I'm explaining is that it's because we wrote, we wrote it. And the fire will test the quality of each one's work. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. If that, if what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. Yeah, yeah. Verse 15. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss. But yet, will be saved. The builder himself, because his foundation is salvation, he himself will be saved. He's telling us deep spiritual mysteries. Yes. He says, if, if, if what you built your life with is hay and it burns off, you will suffer loss. Yes. However, you yourself shall be saved. You will be saved even as through one who is escaping the flames of fire. What does this mean? It means that as we are in church, as we have all received salvation, I'm telling you spiritual mystery. This is a prophecy in itself. As we have all received salvation, some people are, in fact, not some people, everybody here, whether you knew it or not, you are building. You are building of what will happen. Eh? As we are here, as we are here, and, you know, as we are doing all this thing called church, going up and down, and, you know, in America, and doing one thing or the other, let me assure you, one day, one day, one day, everything will come to a cease. Mm -hmm. This message is also a good message. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. All the people, when I went to Dallas, I was in Dallas. And I was like, well, Dallas is a very beautiful city. They have a lot of beautiful roads. And, you know, the roads are very, I was like, wow. For a moment, I thought I was in China. It's like the roads are fighting Chinese war. <laughs> very beautiful city. And it clicked my mind. So one day, all these things will not be there anymore. Yeah. Sometimes it's a good message that will remind Christians again that this is not our end point. Yes. All these things that, my, my good brother, say, I love your shirts, but all your shirts, one day, will not be there anymore. Yeah. My brothers and my sisters, my fathers and my mothers, one day, all the money is, I, I mean, I'm, I'm very sorry when I keep preaching about these things, but everything we've gotten here on earth, would be so waste and nothing one day, one day. It's like a joke, but it's true. One day, one day, nothing else will be useful again. One day, you, everything will be so useless. I don't want to remember of, as of our hearts, but somewhere last year, a young man yeah. amongst us, mm. he left the world like nothing. So just like that, he's gone. And if he was building some kind of credit, and because of that he didn't even eat, if he was doing something, if he bought some shoes, everything that he had is now for another person. There all these things that you're wasting time with there, eh? it will be for somebody very soon. Uh -huh. Give yourself 20 years. No, 20 years, some of you will say. <laughs> all of us, give us 100 years. Amen. Amen. Total, Amen. now I'm talking. <laughs> I read something on somebody's WhatsApp post. It says, 
we, we always keep saying life is short, enjoy it. What about we saying eternity is long? Prepare for it. Yeah. Thank you. All right, that's good. Right, that's good. We are all saying life is short, enjoy it. <laughs> Remind them and tell them that eternity is long and unending. Prepare for it. Yeah. And in preparing for, let me put this message a bit more. Please My sisters, more. sweethearts, the beautiful, this church, when the wedding starts in this church, eh? ah. you're serious. <laughs> no, because you're serious, you'll have the, and my sisters, the married people here, see, so that you stay in the church. If all this gift is gone, where, where are the singers going to be? <laughs> Five people in Atlanta yes. who are staying in Marietta and all this place. <laughs> Even opposite our church, our church, there is an apartment here. Right. You don't like those ones. You see, they don't, they don't like these ones. You don't want humble beginnings. You don't know. God can bless you. Eventually. Can you see that they understand? These people don't understand. I'm saying eventually. Something can change. Eventually, you see that challenge? I'm preaching in the church. So when I say eventually, then you tell me you don't know about it. <laughs> eventually. eventually. I think that things can change. <laughs> like you are looking at Joshua like this. Oh, eventually, see that Joshua has become a billionaire. Yeah. <laughs> so, so one day, follow me, one day, all these things. All these things. You see, all the things we, we spend time. This is not an archaic message. Mm-hmm. This is preaching I'm preaching. Yeah. It's not olden days message. Yeah. You see, yeah. because me too, I can preach revelation. Deep, take my time and explain the Bible to you and bring things and make the message sound so complex. And then I feel good. So when you are inviting me, you know that I have a lot of wisdom. It's not, it's, it, it, it's, it's not always that works. Sometimes the message that saves is simple. Yeah. yeah. Eventually, all these things will come to an end. Everything, all this thing, all this thing that is dragging our eyes so much, eh? my brother. Eh? It, will, it will be like it's a joke. Like I'm preaching this morning. One day you remember. Yes. If you think I'm lying, if after you see, after you die, nothing else makes sense but the source you want. Yes. Yeah, yeah. After you die, because you see, everybody's building. That's my message. We are all building. See, we have a salvation, we have a foundation, and everybody's building. Some are building with gold, others are building with silver, others are building with precious stones, others are building with wood, and others with, with hay. What are you building your, your life on and with? Yeah, yeah. Because the thing that we are following after, if you die, which you will, I cannot prophesy of any other thing. But as for death, I know I can comfortably prophesy. It might be 30 years, 50 years, 100 years, but one day, Rest assured, this my prophecy will come to pass. You will die. Yeah. <laughs> and when you die, you see how irrelevant everything that we are chasing after becomes. If you think I'm lying, die right now. <laughs> <laughs> if you think I'm joking, if you think this, this mistake is a joke, let's get one volunteer who says, I want to try, experiment, let me die. Perfect. And you see that what I'm saying is true. So eventually, all this is, follow me, please, follow me. This message is missing in the church nowadays. Eventually, everything that we are chasing after in this world, they will be gone and passed away. Eventually. And all that we will now be left with is what we build our lives on. Yeah, yeah. So there are some who are building their lives with, with hay. And what is hay? Every other thing that does not last. Because hay, when it passes through fire, doesn't last. You know the things that don't last? One dangerous thing that doesn't last. The Bible says money has wings. Mm. And as we are building, as we are building, if yours is hey, once you have the salvation, you will be saved. But the works will be bent off. Mm. 